Welcome everyone in the session of the Open Publishing Fest. Um, we are um, about to present Africa Archive, which is a preprint repository. And the session is for us here to discuss, um, yeah, why do we need a preprint repository for Africa in particular? Uh, my name is Joe Haverman. I'm, I'm one of the two co-founders of Africa Archive. And I'm here with um, some of my team, or some of the Africa Archive team. Um, we have Johansen Obanda from Kenya, Omar Ahmad, who's currently based in Malaysia, originally from Nigeria. I think Faiza was here, or was gonna come. And Nada and other people. You see an overview of the team in a bit. So I think, I mean, there's several ways we can run this session and I just give you two or three options and um, and then we can just start and see how it plays out. So we would like to encourage everyone to please do speak up and ask questions at any um, point of time, like when uh, to each slide or whichever slide you want to comment to. But if you want, you can also just sit back and enjoy the session and there should be plenty of time um, after the presentation to discuss and ask questions and um, yeah, and engage and and learn and grow together. Um, okay, let's go. Um, so yeah, Avric Archive. Um, so we have we have basically three core um, objectives with Avric Archive. First of all. Um, is everybody familiar with a preprint repository to start with? Since this is an open publishing phase, but maybe we can just briefly share to get everybody on the same page. A preprint repository is a digital archive or database where scientists can upload their work, um, mostly text based, but also data sets and presentations and posters, um, proposals if you want. Um, but primarily for ma text manuscripts that are ready for publication to be shared openly. And those, um, those files then as they're shared on a preprint repository will also get a DOI and um, therefore be citable. They will be assigned a license to ensure that the author and, um, keeps the, the copyright, but that it's also possible to build upon the work that's being shared. So yeah, to be used in the scholarly discourse. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, basically why do we have a regional focus of the African archive is for the, um, firstly to promote the use of local African languages. Um, um, second to bridge language barriers that exist on the continent between Arabic, English, French, Portuguese, and also um, traditional African languages like Swahili, Akan, um, Yoruba, um, Kosa, Zulu, you name it. Um, and also to highlight the relevance of indigenous and traditional knowledge in the research context. So th this already lays some ground for discussion and exchange of best practices and experience, which we as a team would like to engage with you to, yeah, to to learn more also from from your end. Um, Omar, have you been able to solve your audio issues? Omar, can you unmute yourself? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me now? Yes, that works perfectly. Okay. Uma, did you want to add a few words to the slide? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to add um, uh, the advantages of using uh, preprint server like uh, Africa Archive to deposit your manuscripts or any of your documents, uh, academic documents uh, or presentations that you wanted to share with the world. Um, uh, basically, spe uh, generally speaking, um, 
uh, people are not really aware about the preference uh, 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 server, but uh, with social uh, media adverts, people are getting into it, getting to know what it is all about. And uh, uh, one, one, one of the advantages uh, for publishing your work, uh, your manuscripts in preference is uh, that you will be able to be recognized, uh, especially in the fields of your research area. People will know you and you get to know other uh, scientists around the world, especially if you are using preference as a means of getting your uh, literature mining as well. And then um, you will get, you, you, will, you will easily be, be getting higher citations count than uh, your, your, your colleagues who have never deposited his manuscript or, or paper in the in a preprint. And additionally, uh, you receive more exposure with publishing in preprints. People will get to know you and uh, scientists will get to know your research area and that way will open up uh, collaborations uh, between you and other uh, researchers uh, across the world or in the continent of Africa. And uh, the, 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 another third thing to know is um, uh, you, 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 you will work, your work will, will quickly be uh, visible to the world in that because uh, nowadays majority of the top preference around the world are using uh, Twitter for, 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 for tweeting most of the deposited uh, manuscripts. Uh, once the manuscript is deposited within 24 hours, some uh, lasted within 48 hours to just share it within uh, 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 the, the, the Twitter so that people will follow along and see what research is coming and from where is it coming and who is the author. So but, but by this way, you'll be able to know uh, uh, people will know you around the world uh, uh, based on your research. Uh, and one more other uh, advantage is um, your article may be improved, possibly through comments that is uh, because some preference they allow uh, other researchers to make comments in your manuscript. So you'll be able to see uh, positive comments from researchers around, and then you will improve your manuscript before it gets published. And another one more important thing is um, uh, uh, it is a place for unpublishable data. I mean, uh, like your data will be new uh, uh, because uh, no one maybe uh, did similar research like you. So uh, you'll be able to deposit your newly discovered information early before uh, uh, any of your colleagues uh, who are working in a similar uh, field of study uh, publish theirs. Yeah. And as well, um, you, you can publish your research with open access, which is basically free uh, without any charges. Uh, because it's, uh, uh, it's a free print depository, so you just deposit it uh, anytime uh, uh, you want. And then your work will get published when you are still excited uh, about the work. So uh, uh, by the time you, you write your manuscript uh, within, uh, you, you can decide to even send it at, uh, as soon as you complete writing it. So these are all some of the advantages of uh, publishing with preference. You will be cited, you will be highly cited easily. And um, before your manuscript is reviewed by the reviewers, especially nowadays that uh, some top journals take times uh, around one year, basically to publish your work. But by, by that time, uh, your articles must have gotten two or four different citations. So these are some of the advantages of um, publishing with uh, uh, free prints like uh, Africa Archive. Thank you very much, Uma. That's a great summary of um, yeah. of the benefits and the uh, yeah that that preprint repositories bring to the table. Everybody might also be now familiar with BioArchive and MedArchive, which are also preprint repositories, but with a a discipline uh, focus. And whereas Africa Archive and InArchive, InArchive, which is for Indonesia have a regional focus. And there's also French Shive and Arabic um which have a focus on the MENA region and Francophone 
um, research output, respectively. Laura Wilkinson has asked a question in the chat when we talk about science together today. Is it meant to mean knowledge in the widest sense or specifically the science subjects? So basically, um, we refer mostly to research discourse, but also include, an, like with Africa Archive, we put on our agenda to also be open in identifying meaningful and feasible ways of engaging um, citizens and especially um, indigenous knowledge and, um, well, yeah, basically, yeah. And also like open access lays the ground and basically um, enables discourse across sectors. So in that sense, the answer would be um, yes, specifically, but also towards um, more generally. Does that make sense? Is that is it good as an answer, Laura? Okay, cool. Um, okay, so let's just um, yeah jump through the slides. Um, we would like to just briefly introduce the team to you. So we are, um, I think I'm the only non-African on the team. Well, and Michael, who's uh, American. Otherwise, most of the team members are African from across the continent, um, Egypt, Kenya, Nigeria, <coughs> um, South Africa, and Benin, and Sudan on this slide. And then the advisory board is currently set up of six ex experts on science communication on the continent, also with a wide um, distribution across the continent and expertise across various um, topics that concern our work. Um, so basically, as open access and open access publishing are one of the pillars with open science, um, they also enable um, researchers in Africa, Latin America and Asia to easily access papers, collaborate across continents, and increase global visibility to their research outputs. So, um, and this slide addresses the opportunities that open access brings um, with the current systematic challenges that we observe in um, like not enough discoverability or underutilized discoverability of research output from world regions other than Europe and um, Northern America. Um, some background um, on Africa Archive. So we launched in June 2018. So we're approaching two years of operation, and we were we had a, a feature article in Nature or Nature Index, which was then also um, featured in Nature online, and Quartz Africa, which highlighted the fact that from the beginning we um, encourage African researchers to submit their work also in African languages which has not happened so far, but we're working on um, enabling cross-language discourse through translations of at least the abstract or short summary of the work so that the content becomes accessible across language barriers. And again, we are most, um, we would mostly appreciate if, if, um, if you have also a presentation or a, project proposal of some sort in an African language, and you're most welcome to submit this to Africa. Um, this slide is, um, is one of the early mappings of our um, deposited um, or accepted um, uploads, and basically shows, if you go to the link, there's an interactive map, which is slightly outdated over a year now, <laughs> unfortunately, um, just because it's very laborsome to enter all the data. Um, we haven't, um, we are yet to figure out a way to automate that process. So basically this shows which um, preprints have been submitted to Africa Archive and which individual researchers from which institutes in which countries have worked on that paper. And that is then to show the, like how researchers collaborate across the continent or within the continent, but also internationally. Um, so yeah, if you go to the link, you'll find the interactive map. And one of our ongoing projects is to, yeah, to, to design an updated version of that. 
just a um, brief overview of some of the stakeholders for open science in Africa, which some of you are probably most familiar with. Um, so this ranges um, from open science hardware to open access to science communication um, to policymakers and citizens. And repositories and also international platforms like the African Open Science Platform, which is um, now in the process of um, continuing its operational or it's entering its second operational phase. Um, so this is basically what um, submissions would look, look like on the Open Science Framework, um, which is a repository that we initiated operations with back in 2018 and it's still operating today. So this is a submission, um, one up with Dr. King Costa. Recording his own. Sorry, with Dr. King Costa on his work. If you follow the hyperlink in the slide. Um, yeah, and this is a recent submission from last week on just to show you the variety of work. So we are open to any discipline. And the previous one was more medical, analytical oriented, whereas this one is a psychological, um, psychology research um, from Nigeria. Um, and within a week, this one has already received um, yeah, one, more than 130 downloads. Um, this is a tweet from a collab co-collaborator within our networks, Nicholas Aja, as he um, just tried Africa Archive as compared to um, other ways to disseminate his research and um, basically shared on Twitter his experience, how this has already within a couple of days accelerated his engagement with other scientists and also shown that um, that you can build a, um, your own expertise and also um, you know, start discussions right away with other scholars in your network. Um, on our website, you will also find um, 10 principles that we postulated for, um, for open access and scholarly communication. And you can also here go to the subpage on our website to read all 10 of those. And we would just like to point out the first um, principle for open access and scholarly communication as referred to Africa. Um, academic research and knowledge from and about Africa should be freely available to all who wish to access, use or reuse it, while at the same time being protected from misuse and misappropriation. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this again we can also use to discuss about how this refers to your own experience and um, yeah. Just to continue so that we can jump into discussion. So here are some of our partners, which was a phenomenal website. Um, with most of them, those um, organizations that we have shown on our web or that we display on our website, we had initial discussions and also come in agreement that we want to enhance scholarly communication on the continent and internationally actively engaging African researchers in the scholarly discourse on a global level. Um, with some of these, we have um, strategic partnerships, and you will find press announcements and further information on the website in those cases. And we are also working on strategic partnerships for each of them. The repositories that we currently utilize and provide for African researchers to choose from, so basically um, on our website you find uh, the list of basically it's the word um, a list of categories and decision points of how your research context fits into which repository and also for the most part it's it's also a matter of which community you want to affiliate yourself in um, because each of these service providers offers its own community to engage with again and different services that support your work. Um, we are, which is important to mention here, we're also working on a strategy and an implementation plan to build an African-owned repository. Um, 
and there's already a couple of governmental data repositories. There's also research data repositories. And we want to, like, we're very open and also in initial discussions with some of the stakeholders to establish partnerships to, um, yeah, to have an Africa based, African owned, decentralized repository that works across the continent for scientists in whichever academic or research context of their work. Um, which sounds like a dream, it's feasible for sure. So we, we've tested a couple of options, but it's also not super straightforward. So this is why it takes time. In the meantime, we work with these partner organizations who already <laughs> have the infrastructure and agreed to work with us. Um, yeah, so we have customized Africa archive um, uh, spin-offs, no, what is it? Like, because, it's a word, like archives on each of those. Um, you find a table on our website where you can basically compare their services and their, um, also their repository uh, specifics. I think we already had that slide. So obviously open science also um, helps us to quicker and more transparently work towards achieving the SDGs. Um, and some of you might work in context that is relevant. Um, it's certainly relevant for the African context in general. But we also want to encourage um, basic research, which lays the ground to applied research. So yeah, the SDGs are a major pillar of our work and also a major objective to achieve and to work towards. Um, while at the same time, we also see er, like yeah the need and opportunities in um, yeah, doing research for its own sake and also for, for the beauty and the excitement that it brings as a workplace to be a scientist and also for achieving um, and being able to follow your own passion and um, but at the same time contributing to society's benefits and improvements. Um, yeah. I think we already touched on this and can dive into a further discussion in the discussion round um, of the session of yeah how you experience language barriers, how you overcome language barriers, and how um, service providers like ourselves and also others can help in, in yeah building bridges across regions and different languages. Um, a third of the earlier mentioned African principles is um, that African research output should be made available in the principal common language of the global science community, as well as in one or more local African languages, at least in summary, this is what we basically outlined in the beginning. Um, and what, what we also touched on earlier is important to take into consideration in the discussions indigenous and traditional knowledge in its various forms. Um, there was a discussion by the World Economic Forum and the World Health Organization, which has a weekly press conference, which some of you might follow. And the, the official stance on indigenous knowledge, especially for Africa, when it comes to corona and, and research and medical research is that, yes, it's important, and we need to work with scientists to make sure that there's no harmful side effects as indigenous knowledge and med like medical herbs and, and so on and so forth is being um, applied. Um, yeah, in the most feasible way. Um, way. But yeah, this is, it's, you know, I think there's, there's enough room to, and opinions to discuss this in depth. We can touch on this here as well, if you like. Otherwise, um, we are happy to host a separate some um, webinar session on particularly this topic because I think it's probably timely. And yeah, so at the end of the presentation, I just want to point out that we have um, another session in collaboration with Knowledge Futures Groups, uh, Knowledge Futures Group, excuse me, Heather, and one of their representatives also here on this call, thankfully. Um, so please join us next week on May 27 um, at 5 p.m. East African time. Um, I think it's 4 p.m. South Africa. 
Um, yeah, so welcome to this as well. And then our partner organization, TCC Africa, is giving a webinar tomorrow on what does it take to produce high impact African journals. And you, yeah, I will, I will add the link to the slide so you can easily follow the link. You can also follow TCC Africa on their website and get the webinar link from there or on Twitter. Okay, but enough from my side. Johansen or Vanda, can you please can, um, say if I missed something or if you have anything to add? Because like this is yeah, this is a bit spontaneous also and ad hoc. So did I miss anything important or do you have something to add? Please remember to unmute yourself. Yes. Hi everyone. Hi. Okay, Hi, okay. my name is Johansson Bando. Yeah, um, um, thank you for the wonderful presentation, um, Joe and Umar. You're great. I, I believe that they, there have been a lot of good learnings from uh, why we need an uh, African specific reprint repository. Do you have anything to add at this point? Otherwise, we can. No, not just, not just. Okay, just thank you. Add at this point, you're yeah, great. Great. Um, so yeah. Um, so, is there any questions from anyone in this in this round? Please feel free to speak up. Unmute yourself first before speaking. Otherwise, we can't hear you. I just um, put the last slide on where you can find our contact details. But you also find that on our website, obviously. Is there any questions? Um, sorry, uh, um, I have a question. Um, my name is uh, David Hedding. I'm from South Africa. I'm an academic at UNISA. I, um, I recently uploaded my first uh, preprint and um, for work uh, on um, the impacts of COVID-19 on research in South Africa. And my question is twofold. One, what do I do once a journal uh, accepts a paper? And and then, so that's from an author's perspective, but what are there like instructions for um, journals to evaluate what to do with preprints? I mean, do they have to set up their own house rules to, um, to determine whether or not they'll accept preprints as a submission? form and then how how do they do they request that authors take the preprint down once the paper is accepted i don't i mean the the whole um this whole uh, preprint um um how can i put it uh initiative is very new to me so i'm really a bit uh in the dark as to what i'm supposed to do yeah, no, there's valid questions, and I agree. It's, um, I think we can all agree that it's a quite a disputed and diverse topic to discuss and system to discuss. The thing is, there's preprint repositories, like we mentioned earlier, for every region, every discipline, not every, but certain disciplines, for some more than for others. Um, Laura just shared a link also in the chat. Um, so to answer your questions, basically, um, so the first one, you can just upload a new version of your, not, not your manuscript, but upload your, manu no, update the version of your manuscript to the um, journals. What is it? The version of record by the journal. Um, the thing is, so the journals, each journal and each publisher, and not only each publisher, but each journal within a publisher has their own preference of how to deal with preprints. Most, um, if not, well, not all, but most, like more than 85% or around 82 to 85% of the journals of, on this planet um, are okay with you sharing your preprint, which is basically self-archiving, or it's, it's regarded as if you would put your work and manuscript on your own website. So that's green open access. And that's okay with most publishers because the peer reviewed version would differ from the version that you submitted in the first place. You know what I mean? 
but then which version as a preprint preprint the journal accepts to be online is totally up to the journal itself and the editorial boards. So um, unfortunately, there's no common agreement, but I think there's several organizations like Crossref, like um, consortia of preprint services, including Africa Archive and many others. We are constantly discussing of how can we make this easier for the authors to, to understand the variety or to find best practices that work both for the publisher and the journal, but also and foremost for the authors, because it's basically their work that's being discussed and being kind of shared. Um, thanks, Heather and Laura, for sharing the links in the chat. We'll also make those available, I think, on the blog, Julia. Um, so I'll collect those links that we all put together um, and make sure that um, you can access those through the blog uh, Yeah, after the, the session. Perfect. Um, yeah, is this enough of an answer? Is a, there's several publications um, on preprints and the feasibility and the benefits. Um, the criticism that's being discussed on preprints is mostly for fear of scope of publishing, which cannot, as a matter of fact, happen because you get a DOI, you apply your own license of preference. So there's no scooping unless, um, well, there is none, because you prove, as Uma outlined in the beginning, you've proven that you were the one to discover that kind of piece of work um, and that you shared it openly and you put a name on it, basically. Um, other than that, the only conflict of interest is monetary. So Janet obviously want to keep a unique selling point by having top-notch research output, and if that's already shared elsewhere, then they may argue that this disagrees with their general policies, which again would then only be profitable interests, which disagrees with the, the notion of making research results available for societies. And this is why we do research in the first place, as I think most of us would agree. So yeah, it's a it's a disputed topic, but the the common agreement, from my understanding, is that we are on the safe side. You as an author are on the safe side to share your manus your author version of the manuscript, open access or green open access, basically on a repository or on your website. If you the benefit of sharing it not only on your website but also as a, on a repository is that you again, get it indexed so it's more discoverable that way. Otherwise, um, we would rely only on Google search, but um, through indexing, it will pop up in Google Scholar and then also be indexed with other research data, um, data sets and databases. Oh, yeah, Lauren. So here you have uh, first, first uh, knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that that answers my my, my question. Um, I have two two other questions, but I'll, I'll let other people um, ask if you know if they have any other questions before I ask my two follow up questions. Uh, I think you can go ahead. Oh, somebody wants to speak. Please speak up. Yeah, yeah. I just want to add um, in addition to the answers you have given him. Um, uh, actually, uh, majority of the journals nowadays, uh, once you uh, put in your paper on a preprint, you'll be able to, uh, when sent into the journals, you'll be able to write in a cover letter and, and put put the link link to the preprint. And generally, they accept that uh, in, 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 when, once you have the prior, they have the prior notifications and cover letter when submitting to the journal. So they don't have problems in uh, whether rejecting it because you put it in the preference server. Yeah, thanks for adding that. <coughs> okay, otherwise, how, what's your other two questions? Please go ahead. Uh, okay, so my first question is I've read um, that, um, so I submitted my preprint via uh, Zenodo and um, I didn't realize that um, you you should actually, if it's a you know related to Africa, you should actually try and submit it through the Africa archive. 
um, as a preprint and then upload it via Zenobo, Zenodo. But um, is there a way to upload or link the preprint to the Africa archive so that it yeah. um, is sort of searchable after the fact? So I've, it's already on uh, Zenodo. So I have I have linked it as a community, I think it is called, um, on the um, on the website. Um, but I, I've just searched for the preprint on the Africa Archive database, and I didn't find it, you know the, the the preprint didn't come up. So I want to know how do I link it to? I mean, this is a very practical technical thing, but yeah. um, and maybe I could probably just Google it later. But um, the the um, yeah, there we go. That's the second one on the list. Uh, COVID nineteen and and the academia in South Africa, not business as usual. Um, but how did you get that? Uh, I'll, um, okay, I'll, okay, I'll, I'll is, no, 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 don't worry. So this is a again a valid question. So with the Nodo, um, we work as a community. So that, that's basically what anybody can do. And most organizations, also publishers, use the Nodo to to group their research output so for us you did everything right um so also if you go through our website you find the upload link um to africa archive which is basically automatically just assigning the community of africa archive on the nodo to your submission okay. so, so you're perfectly set um the what we are also working on in the back end and we have a github account is with um, the tech experts in our team, like Hisham, just Hisham from Egypt, Justin from Benin, um, Oba from West Grand Nigeria. Um, so we we want to find a way to, and I think Crossref would be able to help with that eventually when we got there. There's just so many things in the pipeline every day. Okay, cool. That's Especially great. That answers my question. Um, the, second question the second question is but, more so the of idea a, is to, to, to yeah, um, hello hello you're breaking a little bit can you uh, hello can you hear me Sorry, it's hard to understand what you're saying. Just for Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I think that's better. Um, okay, so my next question is, um, mm -hmm. in South Africa, we have a real problem with um, academics um, not targeting or being or, uh, publishing in predatory journals. Um, and does Africa Archive, is that a way to almost prevent that from happening? So to make it a... a a, an open platform for academics to publish their work and, you know, sort of, and rather than target potentially predatory journals, then to actually, you know, um, get their work out there without having um, to target or approach predatory journals. Oh, I'm just trying to, to, you know, is it a way to prevent, you know, that sort of activity amongst academics? Uh, I, th I think somebody else can better answer that my, just to shoot my personal opinion. I think yes. So why I think this is a perfect way to safely and legally share your work and without supporting um, profit-oriented or so-called predatory um, journals, um, which don't um, deliver the services as they promise and, and charge whichever amount of money for you to deposit the work with them. So for us, it will always be free for the researcher to submit your work. And we try and work through the highest possible standards, um, which, yeah, as, as much as we can. And we also integrate with the existing internationally kind of connected um, scholarly community and infrastructure. So yes, I think it's personally, it's a, uh, it's a perfect alternative or better alternative to publishing in predatory journals. But obviously it's also, it doesn't exclude um, to publish in, um, 
in any journal as well, but I think especially for African researchers with um, limited funding opportunities and constraints, um, you can also leave it there, disseminate your work as preprint and grow from there and then um, share with, with established journals, African journals and or international ones, um, selected pieces of your outcomes. So that we don't have to stress as much about like don't need there's not that well we basically comply with the no there's no need for publication pressure as much anymore with sharing your work through repositories and that implies also like Africa Archive and or others because some of your work you might want to share on Africa Archive some of your work you might for whichever reason share on Med Archive or Bio Archive or um, so there, the options are manifold, and yes, it's it's more affordable, and in our case, free of charge, and it's timely, and you can still publish in journals. So I think the answer is yes from my end, but I'd like to open the discussion to other opinions and and comments, commentators. Somebody else want to speak on this? Um, otherwise, I pick one. Heather, what's your experience, like in the U.S. context, basically? Maybe it's also an uh, an opportunity to present pub pub and to talk about the experiences that you you've made in this regard. Hi, can you hear me? Sure. Yes. Hi, sorry, the mute and the unmute look really, really similar. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's, I, I'm a historian, and so I think on the humanities and social science side, the whole idea of preprints is still a little bit unusual, um, but we're participating in a lot of education projects uh, that do touch on preprints and um, the role that preprints can play in peer review is increasingly important. Um, I put a link in the chat about the pre-review group, which is a does crowdsource um, review on top of preprints. But also, um, I was formerly with a company called uh, Hypothesis that does open source annotation, and they recently launched a project um, with BioArchive to have uh, publisher channels uh, for peer review to be posted right on top of preprints um, where they live, which I think is an exciting new development. Um, and it's not quite like an overlay journal, but uh, I think the technology to connect up uh, publisher peer reviews with preprints um, gets us into a world where maybe overlay journals um, have more potential. Um, so we are using um, PubPub for crowdsourcing uh, peer review through annotation. Um, that's a really new um, start for us. We're gonna be working with um, Africa Archive, as Joe mentioned, to talk about um, multimedia abstracts uh, and, and preprints, but uh, also posting uh, just traditional preprints for archives who are interested in it. Uh, with the comments enabled uh, so that the authors can gather uh, collaborative review uh, input um, that can improve the, the preprint for publication. So anyone who's interested yeah. in that can contact me, um, just heather at knowledgefutures.org or heather at pubpub.org. Um, I'd be happy to talk more about it. Excellent. Thanks for filling us in. So yeah, um, thanks also for mentioning hypothesis and um, pre-review, which both are also kind of either collaboration partners, hypothesis not directly, but indirectly through the open science framework, which most of the submissions we get so far are aware most are deposited. Um, so this is, I shared a link up on our website again. Um, on on peer review or in our sense in the preprint context you we 
we tend to call it community driven peer review or community peer review where more than two editors or reviewers can basically assess your work and and write a peer review about get, um, publish that again as a preprint as peer review reports or um, also you, know, you can also mention it through publums.org and get um, recognition for your work through that um, Okay, so so yeah, hypothesis and pre-review. There's also a French organization called Peer Community In, which um, has a, a standard established for um, what's it called? Uh, Discipline-specific peer standardized peer reviews, which are either single-blind or open. I think they try not to do double-blind peer review and openness is a different topic on its own. But yeah, we can also discuss more on that in a yeah, maybe in a in a dedicated session. Um, Kate asked a question. Um, Johansson, do you want to take the question? Can you um, summarize? Sorry for <laughs> throwing you into the moderation queue. Johansson, open now. Or maybe he's dropped out. Okay, let me quickly. So, what advice do you have for encouraging deposit, especially internationally, when there is no mandate to do so in the US, at least where I'm working? It is very difficult to encourage deposit as individuals agree with the value, but sometimes don't feel like they have time to deposit. Yeah, that's a real issue because we want to make it easy, as easy as can be for the authors because researchers are there to do research and not to think about how they can market their results, which originally was the duty of the publisher. Um, and now the publisher has shifted that back to the scientists. Um, basically, I think the community is working on, on the digital infrastructure for publishing and dissemination of research output. It's working towards make, making it as interoperable as can be. Um, <clears throat> um, and yeah, I, I always advise, um, please choose the way, like make sure to have the necessary information that makes sense for you and your community and your context and share in a way that makes sense for you as a scientist and not so much for the publisher first. So green open access is always good to make sure that your work can be indexed and licensed, that you can choose the license that you prefer yourself, that you keep um, most of all of the rights to your work. Um, and that's a lot to consider, I agree. But yeah, I think we need to find ways to build capacity um, and what's necessary to know as a scientist as you communicate your work, your working results. I don't know if that's a satisfying answer, but unfortunately we live in very exciting times also digitally, but there's also a lot to, to, yeah, to keep learning on a daily basis and to familiarizing ourselves with. I think the trick is not to be scared. Um, what else? Okay, maybe having an immediate persistent and shareable link would be tracked when that's about how many views downloads. Yeah, I think that's the whole point with DOIs, that you choose a platform where your work is being assigned through Crossref or other service providers. Um, yeah, a digital object identifier. Okay, um, other questions? Johansson, are you back? Do you have something to add? We have five minutes to go. Hi, I'm back. Uh, do you, you do you want to maybe share a few insights about um, the scholarly um, science communication in Kenya and the ecosystem and some of the stakeholders? Oh, great. Um, so when I joined uh, Africa Archive, I got to realize that there. Uh, that is already like a significant penetration of uh, of that in Kenya, including uh, sub submissions. I think I joined the uh, Africa Cup early this year, and I, I found that there are already submissions um, from Kenya, including my city uh, at the lake uh, and Nairobi. Uh, I, on Africa Cup, I think um, using OSF, Open Science Framework. 
yeah and um yeah and so like uh, it means that there's a good potential um for that service also among uh kenyan researchers and um and also um maybe what I, what i also got to understand is that um there's actually need for more awareness um about the service to uh kenyan institutions um from under uh from undergraduate level to postgraduate levels and also um like like africa covid uh has a has a partnership with uh, tcc africa which is based in university of nairobi and it's also likely that um uh, students from there or uh, clients of tcc africa would easily uh, get to know about the service but then uh it's also uh, important that we create outreach to other african to other kenyan universities so that um so that those who have had hurdles uh submitting to formal academic journals can uh, use this advantage and the benefits of a, of a free preprint repository to submit their, 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 their work yeah, and, their, and their research. Yeah, great. And also, personally, uh, my experience with it is that um, I've, I've been able to uh, read um, John, journals, I could say, like, or uh, papers uh, for free, like the whole of it, because uh, normally, even when I was in, uh, when I was uh, when I was in the university, I I wouldn't get access to all of uh, the research papers that I needed. I would only maybe get to the to the abstract level and the parts that I needed to pay. And so this is a great advantage. Like uh, I've seen relevant papers that I would have used, and uh, and I can access like the whole of it. Yeah, so it also um, as a communications manager for, I mean, uh, community manager for Africa Archive, uh, uh, sharing or disseminating uh, the submitted uh, preprints is also interesting uh, so that you get to, to understand uh, the authors and whatever they're going through or uh, to also hear the side of the story and also the, get the experience about using the service um and also w while doing that I, I i've had uh at least one testimonial also from uh so, uh, uh an author in kenya uh for uh from my city of course that it, it it has been um really of benefit to him in terms of getting his research out there and um and getting his research read uh, more by people from from outside uh, compared to when it was only local or when it was just uh, a paper uh, with him. So uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's also uh, one interesting thing. And also getting to uh, interview the authors, uh, the African authors who use this uh, and, and also get, getting to evaluate uh, the impact of the, of the, of the repository uh, among them and also uh, getting to find out if it is uh, actually promoting collaboration uh, across uh, discipline or even uh, across the region. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Joe. Yes, thanks for thanks for 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 the summary. Um, I think that gives a gives a nice scope. I've shared a, a link as well. We we also have a partnership with Science Open, which is also a publisher or in the dissemination discoverability platform and network, research network. Um, and with them, we compiled an automated collection or community, as you know, from the Nudo on COVID-19 in Africa. So there you find a selection of papers on and about, from and about Africa as the coronavirus pandemic is concerned. Um, yeah. Other than that, uh, I think we've, yeah. Is there any remaining questions? So I don't want to throw anyone out just to announce that time is up for the one hour session that we have scheduled through um, Open Publishing Fest. But if you have any, any remaining questions or comments to make, please share them in the chat. And we will be here for a few more minutes. Otherwise, yeah, I think. Omar, do you want to have the closing words?
Oh, Faisal is also here. Faisal, do you want to? Sorry. Faisal, do you want to say a few words? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sorry for joining the session very late. I'm very sorry no, no, for that. No, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. So uh, I'm really happy to be part of this team and to know that uh, there is a repository uh, that's set it for applicant work. Uh, I'm very interested in the work done. Uh, Okay, that's great to have you on the team, Faiza. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for all your work that you've done so far, and we're very much looking working with you for a long time. Me too. Um, <laughs> okay, so maybe we can have a, a last last one or two sentences of if you if you agree that Africa needs its own preprint repository, was this conv convincing as a session, or is there still kind of concerns or different opinions like that there's no need for for an africa specific repository um i think we touched on a few of the arguments we also discussed a few of the infrastructural challenges and opportunities but what's the common kind of maybe you can just share either speak up so just everybody unmute yourselves or or share in the chat a view um, if you say yay or nay or something, <laughs> I don't know. So basically the, the question is, um, do you agree that Africa needs its own repository? Thanks, Gab. And thanks for submitting your work. <laughs> um, I also, Gab, also for you, just um, to point out, I've shared earlier a link on GitHub where we have a hub and search portal um, proposal basically that we intend to implement in the coming years, probably hopefully sooner than later, um, where we make all the African research output discoverable in one place and not across um, yeah, 10 or 20 or 30 databases. Yeah, that would really help. Um, and yeah. Um, it's been a really interesting learning curve for me over the last two weeks. So, um, yeah, it's it's um, it's a very good initiative. Um, I think it needs a lot more publicity to make academics aware of the options of using preprints. And um, but yeah, I think it has a lot of potential going forward. Thank you very much. And you're most welcome to ask any question anytime. Like shoot us an email or join us on Slack or on Twitter. You can just you know re feel free to reach out with whatever, and we'll see what we can do. Cool, thanks, all. OK, so opinions so far are towards, yes, um, we, we're on a good track here. If you have concerns, that's also valid. Please share them with us, and then we can um, see um, if we can kind of convince you of otherwise, or um, if if we can change direction, which is also a normal, normal um, thing to happen um, with initiatives like ours. Okay, thanks, Paisa. Okay, otherwise, um, I let you go. There's other sessions um, in the afternoon and evening, or yeah, during the day for the Americans. Um, thanks for being here, and um, yeah, please. Um, let us know within the next um, eight hours or so if you have concerns of this recording being uploaded online. Um, otherwise, we'll make it available for other people, maybe also for a, um, for a limited time period, a couple of days or three, four weeks, um, and then take it offline again, just to allow other people to follow the session. Um, but if you have concerns, please let us know and we will restrain. Thanks very much, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs>